Hello, in this video we are going to look at the effect of taxes on monopoly and we'll also consider how consumer and producer surplus are affected by taxes as well as the deadweight loss. So case one will be our reference case. Case one we have a monopoly that faces an inverse demand curve given by P or price equals 20 minus Q where Q is the quantity demanded. The monopolist faces a marginal cost of MC equals 2Q. So we're going to just do standard profit maximization here. We can calculate total revenue, TR, as price times quantity. The price is given to us as 20 minus Q, so I'm just going to substitute 20 minus Q in for P. So we get 20 minus Q all multiplied by Q. Simplifying, we get 20Q minus Q squared. Uh, the next step is marginal revenue. So for marginal revenue, we will take the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity. So the derivative of 20Q minus Q squared is just 20 minus 2Q. And one rule of thumb is that marginal revenue will look like the inverse demand, except that it'll have a slope that is twice as steep. So instead of 20 minus Q, marginal revenue is 20 minus 2Q. Okay, with that, we'll just set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. 20 minus 2Q equals marginal cost of 2Q. Collecting the Q terms, 4Q equals 20. Dividing through by 4, Q equals 5. So the profit maximizing output for this monopolist um, is 5 units. We'll take this 5 units of output and plug it into the... Uh, inverse demand function, so 20 minus Q, where Q is 5, we get a price of 15. The profit maximizing price is 15. So this is the monopolist without taxes. We'll see how things change when we put a tax now on the monopolist output. So in screen 2, oops, in screen 2, the monopolist has an inverse demand of price equals 20 minus Q, just like in case 1. The marginal cost now is adjusted for the tax. Here we're going to assume a $4 per unit tax is placed on the monopolist. So the, the effect on marginal cost is pretty straightforward. We're just going to add this constant here of $4 to the marginal cost equation. Nothing changed with total revenue or marginal revenue. So just like the last screen, uh, everything is uh, unchanged here. Setting marginal revenue equal to our new marginal cost. Uh, we will then solve for Q, and Q equals 4. So not a surprise in the face of the tax. Uh, the output shrinks, and the price will be a little bit higher. Plugging this 4 back into our inverse demand, we now have a price of $16. So it's really not too difficult to analyze monopoly in the face of the tax. Uh, we have a per unit tax or an excise tax. We're just going to add that dollar amount to our marginal cost equation. So if it was a $3 tax, it would be plus 3. $10 tax would be plus 10, uh, and so on. All right, now let's look at some of the welfare implications, and this is slightly more complicated. In this next screen, what I did was I graphed our solutions to case 1 and case 2. In case 1, the... The relevant marginal cost curve is just uh, MC equals 2Q. What we did was we found where that marginal cost uh, intersected marginal revenue. That intersection is right here, and that corresponded to five units of output. We plugged that five units of output into the demand equation, and we found that the price was $15. Okay, so we located our solution to case one, finding where marginal cost equals marginal revenue here in this diagram. Uh, I'll talk about the second marginal cost after, but let's go over here and look at uh, what's going on. Uh, so let's calculate, uh, maybe I won't go in the same order I listed it here, let's calculate consumer surplus under the no-tax scenario. So under the no-tax scenario, consumer surplus is going to be given by this expression right here. And it's just going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the price that consumers are paying. So without taxes, consumers are paying $15. So it's going to be this area given by the height of the demand curve and the price of $15 up to the last unit purchased, which is five units. 
So we got a triangle given by these dimensions. Uh, so 1 half 20 minus 15 multiplied by 5. Okay, this triangle has a, a base of 5 units. So that's consumer surplus without taxes. Producer surplus, uh, slightly more complicated. Uh, so let me just first show you the area. Producer surplus is going to be the difference between the price that the monopolist is getting and its marginal cost curve. So from $15, oops, excuse me, from $15 all the way down to the marginal cost curve, this area will represent producer surplus all the way up to that fifth unit. So we've got this giant area right here representing producer surplus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that area into two regions. One region will be a square that has the dimensions, oops, sorry again, Run, one region will be a square rectangle given by 15 all the way down to $10. So this is a, maybe a width of five units. So 15 minus 10 is five units. And the length of this rectangle is um, also five units. And that's the first part of this producer surplus uh, equation here. So the first part of uh, producer surplus is just this area of a rectangle. The next part of the producer surplus uh, area is going to be a triangle uh, that has dimensions that are outlined uh, by my mouse here all the way up to ten dollars all the way down to marginal cost so we have dimensions of a uh, of a triangle that has a height of 10 so one half the height of 10 multiplied by the the base of five so that'll be producer surplus uh, for the monopolist when there are no taxes. With the tax, we will, oh, I forgot the deadweight loss, sorry. Uh, the deadweight loss is going to be this triangle right here without taxes. Uh, the deadweight loss will be this triangle where the demand curve exceeds the marginal cost curve for all these units of output up to 6.67. So I guess, you know, how did I get this 6.67? So all I did to find this intersection was I set this marginal cost, this 2Q, and I set it equal to our price equation. If you recall, our price equation was uh, 20 minus Q. So I set 20 minus Q equal to 2Q and found that intersection to occur at 6.67 units of output. And then that price is thirteen dollars and thirty three cents. Uh, and we'll use we're not going to use that thirteen thirty three here, but uh, we'll use that in a minute. So that's how I found the sixteen point six seven. Just set marginal cost equation equal to the price equation. All right. So the dead weight loss is going to be this triangle. Uh, this triangle has a height of fifteen minus ten, and it has a base of six point six seven minus five. So that's what I have written here. So that's the dead weight loss in the case of no taxes. Okay, moving on. When we place a tax on the monopolist, the re relevant marginal cost curve is now the marginal cost plus tax. So this equals 2Q plus 4. We found where this new marginal cost curve intersects marginal revenue. That's at an output of 4. Okay, so MC with taxes equals marginal revenue right here. We plug that 4 into the demand equation. We get a price of 16. Okay, so let's start with, with consumer surplus. Consumer surplus with a tax is going to be the difference between the demand curve and the price that consumers are now paying, $16, up to that last unit. So we have a triangle given by 1 half 20 minus 16 multiplied by 4. So 20 minus 16 is the height and the base is 4 units. So that's consumer surplus. Producer surplus is going to be basically um, everything below $16 uh, to the marginal cost curve with taxes. So I'll just outline that area with my mouse. So this is going to be producer surplus. 
And I'm going to do the thing that I did before. I'm going to break this area up into two regions, a rectangle region and a triangle region. So starting with the rectangle region here, we've got 16 all the way down to, that's going to be $12 right there, okay, where the new marginal cost curve intersects marginal revenue. Um, that's going to be $12. And one way you can figure that out is just take this four units of output and plug it into marginal cost. Two times four is eight plus four. So indeed, marginal cost is $12. So we calculate the area there of 16 minus 12. So we've got a width of four units and a length of four units. Oops. So that's that first calculation right here, 16 minus 12 all the way up to 4. And then the remainder of producer surplus will be this rectangle uh, that begins here at $12 and goes down to the marginal cost. So we got 12 minus 4 um, multiplied by the base of 4. So 1 half, 12 minus 4 times the base of 4 would give you producer surplus. And what do we got left? Uh, finally, we got left the dead weight loss. Uh, we've got a big triangle here for the dead weight loss. I'm outlining it now with the mouse. So we got 16 all the way down to 8. And the, the base here is going to be 6.67 minus 4. So here are the dimensions of that dead weight loss triangle with the tax. And so one thing that you know falls out of this is that if you tax monopolists, the dead weight loss becomes larger. Uh, as we see here, this is a much bigger triangle than our original triangle. Okay, uh, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.